today's episode in my life in football, we are joined by goalkeeper Jay Forder. Yeah, day in the time, the time's yeah. now, fam. Yeah. Let's spin yeah. it, let's kill it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way think I'm feeling the juice. Yeah. Jay Forder, how are we doing today, mate? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Enjoying the day. How's 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 life in America then? That's no, good, man. It's 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 real good. It's real good. I think um, you know things are still a little bit locked down, but um, on the whole, um, Texas is pretty much opened up around here, so uh, things have been good. Been able to get back into training, so it's been good. Man. Mm. Before before you got back into training. How are you staying fit? Are you doing a bit of home exercise or? Yeah, yeah. Um, home exercises, um, Zoom workouts with the team. You know, whenever you can, you can find a free patch of grass, get a ball out and then do a bit of work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love it. Um, we'll, we'll start then with your kind of earliest memories of football growing up. Okay. Who were your kind of main idols, stuff like that? Okay, right. To be honest with you, um, I didn't even like football when I was younger. Really? Um, yeah, no, the way I got into football was really strange. Um, well, I'll tell you how I got into it. Um, to be honest, um, one day my friend didn't turn up for, for school. So I was bored and I was just uh, kind of sitting in the playground, not really doing much. And um, a few boys are playing football. And they're like, hey, you know, you want to play? And I was like, nah, nah, don't want to do that. And they were like, do you know what? Go and go. You ain't got to do much. So I was like, all right, then go on then. And then um, stood in goal, someone had a shot, you know, slapped the ball away, no technique, nothing. And I was like, hold on a second, this ain't bad. <laughs> so, um, enjoy it. yeah, for real, I was like, this is all right. So, you know what, I kind of just went from there. And that's um, kind of how I got into football. Um, when I started to, you know, grow up and start understanding the game a bit, start understanding my position, um, I can't say I really had any idols, but um, there was one guy, because I started at Luton Town, um, and the first team goalkeeper was Dean Brill at the time. So, um, I, you know, I'd watch him quite a bit, and mm. I'd hope to try and emulate what he'd do, you know. So I'd say that's probably the earliest person uh, in terms of football that I really started to watch and started to, um, you know, try and emulate. Mm. How did you mention Luton? How did that all come about? Well, um, came about fast, you know. So um, as I, I started picking up the game, um, I started playing for a team called um, Luton Borough Dragons, just like a local side. And then, um, you know, I had um, a good few months with them. Then I moved into another team called Crawley Green. And they were right. like, a, say like a premier team. Um, mm. But it's still a local side. But, you know, they were, they were really good and we were doing well. And then, um, yeah, so Luton Town Scouts... Um, they just happened to see me, invited me in for, um, for a six-week trial, did well. Um, I had a few friends that actually played for Luton at the time from my school right. and from other schools. So, um, yeah, did well, and then they, they signed me up, you know, so it was good. Mm-hmm. How, how was the experience being in an academy for the first time? That must have been a bit different. That was, that was unbelievable. It's like, you know, um, starting out not really understanding football, not really knowing what it's about you know, just playing in the playground, then playing uh, with, you know, local sides to go into an academy. That was just like a, that was a whole different thing because it was like, everybody was good, mm. you know? Mm. And it's like, um, they were doing things that I hadn't, I hadn't seen before. You know, I was, I was even watching some of the older academy goalkeepers and I was just like, just watching their technique and how professional they were at such a young age. That was, that was real good, man. The training was unbelievable. Um, and you know what? To be fair, Luton Town, we always had a really good academy, you know, because I think mm. we've got a good few players that are playing in the league now, playing abroad, that um, all came through Luton. For example, Lewis Baker. Yeah. He was at Luton Town Academy. Yeah, now yeah. he's at Chelsea. We've got the De Silva brothers who were at Luton Town Academy. Um, and I think they're different places now, but they all went to Chelsea. Yeah. Corley Woodrow went to Fulham, you know. Michael Kane went to Leicester. Um, so, you know, we've had a load of players. Uh, Matty Harriot went to Sheffield United. You know, we've had a load of players that have gone through the Luton Town Academy. So the academy was very, very good. Mm. You mentioned a few names there. Did you train with them? 
yeah, no, they they were on the we were on the same team. Yeah, <laughs> which, yeah. which is crazy, you know. Um, there's another one, Dave Molly, who went to Liverpool. We were all in the same two, all around the same age. So hmm. our academy team was good, man. <laughs> we would just go, we'd go all over, um, all over the coast and just slap teams. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we were, deep, man. we were real good. So how how did the time come to an end at Luton? How did you get released? Was that a yeah. hard experience for you? Oh man, that was. Do you know what? It's like it was. It was difficult, man, because it was like I've been playing. I I kind of set myself out a path in my head as to you know how I was going to get into the first team and how this and that and you know I think one day they just um, well to be fair the signs were coming. So towards the end, they'd bring in, um, say, other goalkeepers on trial. And there's a guy now who um, he came in on trial. Fortunately, he, you know, he didn't, he didn't get in. End up signing for MK Dons. And now he's um, playing for Brisbane Roar in the A-League. Uh, right. Max Crockham. Um, me and him still keep in contact. But yeah, he yeah, came yeah. in on trial. Um, they bring Is he at Salford as well? He's at Salford as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, he came in on trial. And then that goalkeeper came on trial. So I kind of saw the signs coming. And... You know what? They pulled me up uh, one day and just said, "You know what? You're too small." <laughs> really? Just yeah, this is too small. They're looking for somebody who's more six foot two, and I was more five foot nine at the time. So <laughs> yeah. happens so, a lot yeah, in football, doesn't it? Happens a lot, man. Happens a lot. Um, you know, it's like to be, to be fair. I think one of the scouts said to me at the end, "You know, they want someone to be six foot two by the time they're 16. So yeah. you know, obviously I wasn't. So you know that mm. kind of. I brought about into my time at Luton. So after Luton, where did where did you go from there? So I was bouncing around doing doing trials. So I actually landed a trial at Arsenal. Um, really? Yeah, it wasn't long. Um, mm. Needs to say I didn't get in, but um, but that was a really good experience. You know, um, just going down there and training. That was at London Colony at the time. Mm. Going down there and training with a team. Um, that was just a whole different level. You know. Um, I can imagine. <laughs> Yeah, man, the, the facilities were just that mm. much better, you know. It was um, the players were that much better as well, and you know what? That experience really grew me as well. So um, yeah, I'm grateful for the time I was able to to go and go in there. So that that was good. Mm. Did and you spend then, uh, any time in non-league? So I did spend a lot of time in non-league as well. Um, right. That's so. Um, if I'm trying to remember all the teams, I, I bounced around the non-league, man. Mm. <laughs> So, Ware Town, I spent some time at um, Banbury United. Oh, really, Banbury? Banbury United. You know, you know what's funny about that? What's that? I'm I'm a Brackley supporter, Brackley Town. You're a Brackley Town supporter, yeah. 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 Okay. So, okay. That's, that's, yeah. That's I'm into my local football, so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, I think um, yeah, I played uh, for Banbury United for a first. I was there for almost a full season so yeah I did mm. I did bounce around the non-league quite a bit I played for another um, another just local side as well you know just trying to trying to find my foot in and trying to find a way you know what, what I wanted to do mm. Mm. so how did the move to America come about then oh do you know what even more happened before that man really <laughs> yeah mate I was I was a, I was a lover so um, so I ended up going to um, doing a trial at Leeds um, that wow. was, yeah, that was short lived as well. But wow. uh, once again, like I said, I was um, I was happy for the experience and all these like experiences at different clubs that kind of grew me. The experience mm. in the non league grew me as well because you know I was playing with men who were um, mm. fighting for their paycheck. You yeah, know? like your first taste so, of kind of senior football. Exactly, exactly. So mm. all these trials, Leeds, Arsenal, non league, that all really grew me. Um, I kind of fell out of the game a little bit. Um, I went to university. Mm-hmm. Got my degree, and then um, you know my missus. She moved over to, over to the states, and she was like, "You know, do you want to do you want to try and pursue it over there?" So that brought about my um, my 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 first move to the US. So I was just you know I was trying to you know get a trial here and there, and eventually I managed to land uh, myself at the New York Red Bulls reserves. Right. So uh, that was unbelievable. Okay, so. Mm-hmm. Gradually, gradually managed to work my way up. Um, this is in 2014, I believe it was, because... Right, my are these on training... times? That's what right. I to say. Yeah, yeah. My first training session, uh, me and the missus drove up to uh, Red Bull's um, training ground. 
and Tim Cale just gets out of his car and he's fresh off the goal in the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was oh, kind wow, of like, that's mental. Yeah, I was kind of like, whoa, hold on. Mm. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, it was Tim Cahill, um, Thierry Henry, Peggy Lee and Dula, Roy Miller, um, Luis Robles, some kind of players. Like, so I was a. Uh, Mm. I was training. I was training with them. I had a few sessions with them, and that was that was just a whole different level. It was like they just do what they wanted with the ball, you know. It was uh, it's just didn't have to think about it, and you know, I um I was really really hoping to get signed there, you know. And, yeah. Um, you know, I was doing everything I can, staying late, coming in early, doing all the um the little extras, you know, trying to make as many saves as possible, distribute all that kind of stuff to you know earn myself a contract. Eventually, like I said, it didn't it didn't come about. But um, it was really, really good. I was there for quite a while. I was there for a few months, actually. Um, but, yeah, it didn't, didn't sign me in the end. And um, I kind of had to reevaluate things and find out, you know, what I was going to do next. Um, so, from there, <laughs> I've had kind of, kind of a wild journey, to be honest. So, I ended up mm. in South Africa. Really? Yeah, mate. I ended up in South Africa. And, it's wow. just, and I don't advise this, but um, my parents didn't even know I went there. <laughs> Because right. um, so I was like, they probably think I'm crazy if I turn around and say I'm going to go to South Africa. Mm. So, uh, yeah, no, um, ended up in South Africa, trialling for a team called Polokwane City in the South African Premier League. Um, that whole experience didn't really go well at all, to be honest with you. Um, mm. The manager got sacked as I got there. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the new one kind of had no idea that I was even going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So um, yeah, no. So I find myself in the middle of Soweto, um, where I was staying. I was staying in Soweto. I took a, I believe, if I remember correctly, it was a ten-hour, I think it was a ten-hour bus ride to Polokwane City. I took. That was ridiculous. A, yeah, mate. Had a training session. Ended up staying in like a small little room, like no signal on my phone. Had another training session and was like, Do you know what, I'm done. Because hmm. I um, got a bus ride back to um, Johannesburg, ended up staying in Soweto for like almost a month, trying to trying to sort out a trial. I uh, did actually end up going to watch um, the Orlando Pirates. Right, and, uh, yeah. That the Rand Stadium it was. Um, I think that was a stadium they used for like cup finals for a bit, but it ended up being um, the Orlando Pirates um, training ground. So I ended up watching um, a training session there, just trying to get myself a trial. <laughs> Didn't manage to do that. So um, eventually, uh, you know, I was back on the old plane, back to, uh, back to England. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, mm -hmm. just kind of sitting in England, trying to work out what in the name I was going to do next. Because as you can tell, I've bounced all over the place by this point. So I'm um, yeah. trying to work out yeah, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Am I going to call it a day or yeah. you know what's what's gonna happen obviously i've got my degree as well so you know that's another option but you know i, I, I didn't want to give it up i spoke to the missus and she was like she's like nah she's like no 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 she's like you've done you've done way too much to turn around and be like i'm not doing it anymore so i'd send out thousands of emails man i think i've probably emailed every club in the football league non-league up to the mm. premier League level and abroad <laughs> by this point so i was like oh, i was like what am i gonna do and i ended up um speaking to a guy uh marius rovda um at the vancouver whitecaps all right and yeah funnily enough my missus nan lived in vancouver so i that's you know that's a place mm. to stay while convenient I'm there. convenient mate so um yeah no he was um he was like, do you know what? He's like, do you know what? Come in. He's like, um, come, if you can get over here, you know, we can, um, you can come in and train and stuff like that. So they also had the Whitecaps too. So um, I flew over there and I didn't even give myself time to adjust, you know. Mm. Obviously the time difference, the altitude. I flew over there. I can't remember what day it was, but the next day I was training. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, I was completely gassed. Like, oh, yeah. like, couldn't even breathe nothing it was it was wild man but um i ended up training with the white caps too um under uh, who was the coach again alan Koch was the coach he's now um he's the coach of um the um colorado switchbacks now right. he was the yeah he was the coach of the white caps too 
was um, training under him, training with um, a goalkeeper called Spencer Ritchie. He's now the first team goalkeeper at um, FC Cincinnati. Oh, right. Ended okay. up playing, yeah, ended up um, training with Will Seymour as well. He, he um, spent time at Reno, and I think he's playing in um, some of the Irish Premier League or the Welsh Premier League, something like that. And um, one name, Alfonso Davies. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, um, ended up training, training with him at Whitecaps too. And um, and Marco Bustos, he's now playing um, for um, he's now playing for Vancouver in um, the Canadian Premier League. But all really nice lads. Um, I was there for like four or five months, I believe it was, um, and it was an amazing experience, man. It was real good. I I, I love being there, training every day with them. Um, um, you know, I was I was at all the home games. Um, I was at the first team games as, as well. We trained at the stadium, like. <laughs> It was just a brilliant experience, and I think, I think that was the. Obviously, I wanted to sign with every team that I was with, but I think that was the first time I was really like, "My God, please!" Like, I, I, I really want to stay here. This is this is this is incredible. You know, I'm really enjoying it. I feel like I'm learning so much. I'm training, you know, better than I ever was before. You know, I was feeling really, really good about things. You know, um, unfortunately, uh, once again. Uh, didn't quite, you know, manage to earn myself a contract there. So I was feeling a little bit discouraged. Um, mm. Didn't really know where to go next or what to do. Um, spoke with um, my nan, also my missus' uh, nan in um, Vancouver, and I was just like, this is, this is tough. And she was like, look, you just got to keep going. It's better with the family as well. They're like, yeah. you just got to keep going. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of, Got back on the plane, went back to England. Uh, I was kind of sitting around trying to, um, I was doing goalkeeper coaching actually. Um, so, right. training, training yeah, with the yeah, yeah. coach that I know. Um, and he was training me, you know, just keeping me sharp, um, all that kind of stuff. And that's all great, you know, you're just you're training, you're honing your skills, but it's nothing like being, um, you know, really being at a club, you know. So, I was. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was feeling a bit depressed, man. Like it was it was tough, it was mentally tough, man. I was like, I'm putting in all this work, you know, I feel I've got the ability, I feel I've you know, I've been in these places, and it's not like I'm I'm not going anywhere and it's like and it's not it's not like I'm struggling. I'm going mm-hmm. anywhere, I'm competing, I'm doing well, it's just I'm just not getting over the line. They're just not giving me the, yeah. the opportunity yeah. I feel I deserve, you know. So I'm sitting around, I'm sitting in a chair in the living room. Um, mum's in the kitchen, dad's upstairs, and I'm kind of just not doing anything. And I get a call from the goalkeeper coach I've been training with. Right. Like, hey, um, West Ham. It's like I'm mates with a um, goalkeeper coach at West Ham, and um, they need somebody to shoot at, somebody extra who's just going to go in and let them shoot at And I was like, well, I'm your guy, innit? Like, <laughs> it's like I'm not doing anything, I'll go. So, no brainer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> went down there. Um, and yeah, after the first after the first session, um, went really really well. Had a shooting session, made tons of saves, and then um, Angel was kind of like, hmm, "Do you, do you want to come back? Do you want to do you want to come back in again?" I was like, "Yeah, go on, man." So I'd um, I'd come in again, do the same thing again, train, make saves, join in the uh, the small sided games. Hmm. Do you want to come again? No problem. Kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. Eventually, I was just like, "Hey, do you know what, Jay? Just keep come, keep coming. Do you know we like we we, we like you here? Um, you know, you, you, you're a massive help in training. You know, you've, you've clearly got ability. So that was me. You know, um, made a lot of friends there. Actually, I still, that friends that I still I still speak to now. But um, that being back in that environment. Um, cause it wasn't quite a bit of time between, uh, me leaving Vancouver and me doing this, um, yeah. being back in the environment of training every day with, um, players of premier league level, you know, mm. um, that was, that was incredible. Um, uh, I think one thing, you know, I, um, uh, one claim to fame is, is, uh, I've got, Ad- Ad- I've got Adrian's boots. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. And, um, trained with Dimitri Payet. Um, right. Yeah. 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 He, um, he came in because I was training with 23s at the time and he um, he came down and trained. This is before his move to Marseille, I believe it was. Mm, um, yeah. yeah, so he came and trained as well. Um, but like I said, just being in that environment, training every day, um, training with players who 
were full internationals, you know? Mm. Yeah. That was incredible. And it ended up being there for two years, you know? Really? Two years? <laughs> yeah, it, ended up, it ended up being there for two years. It was, it was, um, it was really, really good, man. I, um, like I said, I still speak to a lot of the players. Some of them have moved on. Um, some of them are like, well, one of them's at Newcastle, one Derby, one's playing for, um, who is it? Uh, Burton Albion. Right, like, yeah. Yeah, so um, a lot of them have moved on now, but, you know, the experience that, you know, I carried there, that was that was unbelievable. And, um, you know, when it ended, I kind of knew, I kind of knew in my mind that, you know, I can't give it up because I've been competing every day with players that are at West Ham United. So I've mm. clearly got ability. They're not going to tell me to keep coming back for that length of time if I've got no ability. And do you know what? That kind of was the drive that kept me going, as yeah. well as my family, my wife, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was... Um, the fact that I'm going in these places and they're asking me to come back. Okay, they're not quite giving me a contract, but they're asking me to come back. You know, they're having mm. me in, you know, I'm getting my foot in the door. So, and you know, it's also building up my CV. Yeah. You know, so um, yeah, that kind of was the driving force behind me um, keeping going. So eventually went back to the States mm -hmm. and um, I was doing some coaching out in the States because I, really couldn't find a club man it was um i was i was struggling to really you know um, especially being an international as well yeah uh, obviously they've got roster regulations and rules and all that kind of stuff so um yeah no that was um it was difficult finding a club man i dude i've been to so many open trials and yeah. invitational trials all over the u.s man um paying out of pocket um, mm. to stay at these hotels, to fly to different areas of the country to go. And you know what? It was always the same thing. It was, you know, we can't take on an international. You know, um, it was never, you know what, Jay, you're not quite there. It was, yeah. it was you know what, we, we haven't got international roster slots that we can, we can put you in. And if we do, we want a striker, yeah. you know, or a midfielder, something like that, you know. Um, so... So yeah, um, it got disheartening, man. Um, I, you can name a trial. I think I've been to it. Um, mm. So eventually, years went by. I was just doing coaching and stuff. Um, eventually, uh, the Canadian Premier League came about. Mm. Yeah. And um, you know, my wife was like, "You know, do you want to do you want to do you want to have a look at that?" And I was like, "Been everywhere else. Why not?" So mm. we actually, we drove from Connecticut to Toronto. Really? Um, That's yeah, unreal. Yeah, yeah, mate, drove from Connecticut to Toronto, stayed in the hotel. And then I think uh, the day after we uh, attended one of the trials and I, I did well, man. I mm. did well. Um, but once again, you know, when they were going to call, call him back, the people um, that they wanted to, you know, to, 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 to take, look, take a look at for a second day. Dude, I didn't even make a second day, man. And mm. it was like, at this point, I was like, what's going on, man? Mm. I was like, I was like what, what is happening? And she was baffled because she watched the trial. She was like, did I, did I like see this? Am I watching the same game? Obviously, yeah, you could say there's maybe a little bit of bias there. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. She's been around football enough to know, to know she understands the game. She'll, 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 she'll watch the Premier League, you know, she'll watch MLS, like, she understands the game. So she's like, hold on a step. Like, mm -hmm. don't seem right. So I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? So I was like, do you know what? Let's, when in Niagara Falls, let's go see Niagara Falls. <laughs> went to Niagara Falls. Well. Yeah, <laughs> went to Niagara Falls. And then she was just like, do you know what? Um, why don't you, why don't you um, try go for another trial? So... I was like, all right, go on then. Trial at New Mexico. New Mexico United. Went for a trial there. Um, Two-day trial. And this one wasn't my best. I, I know it wasn't. I wasn't good. I don't think I was all there anyway. I was kind of... Because it was fresh off of the um, Toronto one. I was kind of just like, I don't even know what to do, man. So, um, went, for the, went for a new trial in New Mexico. Didn't get in. I didn't really, to honestly, I really didn't expect them to take me on because I was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I just wasn't there, man. I was pretty bad. So I was, I was done. Mentally, I was done, man. I was like, this is it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. Um, the missus was like, do you know what? 
go for one more. She's like, go, go for one more. So I was like, all right, go on then. So I um, ended up speaking with Mark Lowry, manager of El Paso. And I was kind of like, hey, Mark, um, I'm Jay, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm looking for a trial. <laughs> mm. um, he was kind of like, all right, He's like, all right, okay. Um, show, show me your stuff. Set him over my stuff, didn't hear back. So I was kind of like, oh, <laughs> well, that's that, you know, um, I'm done. Missus was like, no, 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 no. She's, she's, she's like, he didn't, he didn't say no though, did he? I was like, but he didn't respond. She's like, but he didn't say no. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I suppose you're right. She's like, God, get hold of him again. So I was like, all right, got hold of him again. No, no answer. I think he's, but he was busy though. He was really, really busy. Obviously, you know, uh, El Paso's a new team. So he was yeah. trying to get, get things running, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, I was old. I was like, I didn't hear anything. She's like, well, it doesn't matter. Get hold of him again. He hasn't said no. Until he says no, then it's no. She's like, until, until that point, kind of, mm. you kind of got to keep going, isn't it? So I was like, all right, go on then. Messaged him again. And he actually he got back to me. And he was like, he's like, yeah, Jay, you know what? I actually looked at your stuff. He goes, it's all right, you know. And he goes, mm. uh, we have a, we have a um, invitational trial happening in December. And he goes, I want you to come. Um, you know, you have the trial. If you do well, you'll go from there. So I was like, all right, no worries, no worries. So I'm buzzing. We're, yeah, we're, yeah. we're all like, ah, oh, all right, this is good, this is good, this, 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 this was good, all right? Um, so just prepare now. I just prepared myself, prepared myself, trained, all that kind of stuff. Like, and obviously there's no one to train with. Like, um, so I was just doing my own personal stuff until I met a guy um, who actually runs a goalkeeper page on, um, on Instagram, uh, Hami Kara. Um, ended up training with him. And he helped, me, he helped me get ready, you know, really um, sharpen myself up before the trial. So, um, yeah, you know, just uh, saved up a bit of money. Mrs. helped me. Flew out to El Paso for this invitational. So, I'm going there as an international player. So, um, went there, had the, stayed in the hotel, had the first day, had the second day as well. Um, and... I felt good, man. I thought I did well. Like, yeah. that's, that one, you know when you do well, when it? Like, and it's mm. like, if you're, if you're honest with yourself, you know when you're not quite there, you know when you've done bad, and you know when you've done good. And mm -hmm. I felt, oh, I've, had a, I've had a decent trial here. Um, so, you know, one of the coordinators in the trial was like, hey, you know what, we're going to email every one of you, and we'll go from there. Um, so, yeah, I told the missus, I was like, um, yeah, so that's just what they said. So they get back to us in within two weeks. So, you know, I'm just, uh, just going to wait. So I'm waiting around, waiting around, waiting around. Heard nothing. Um, didn't hear anything at all. Um, so I was kind of like, crap. Well, this ain't good. Um, kind of just mm -hmm. sitting around, waiting to hear. And she was anxious. She was like, can't, can't, she's like, can't you, can't you text them? Can't you like ring anybody? I was like, nah, I can't do that. That's not the way it's done. She was like, well, the way you've been doing it ain't been working. So just, 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 just message somebody. So I uh, sent the coordinator a message and he got back to me and was like, yeah, Jermaine, actually, we, we are going to um, ask you to come back in. Uh, sorry, it's taken long to get back to you. We're just, um, you know, sending other emails and stuff. And what's funny is, I was actually the only, only international player that got called back. All the rest that I got called right. back were all, were all uh, local to El Paso. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was, I was, I was buzzing, man. Um, so I go in for pre-season. Um, throughout the pre-season, I just, um, we were, me, and, me and the missus saved money, bounced from hotel to hotel, trying to find the cheapest one to stay in because obviously mm -hmm. uh, Double Tree racks up pretty quick. <laughs> So I'm bouncing around from hotel to hotel all over El Paso, um, getting Ubers to train in, you mm. know, paying, tr tr trying to eat McDonald's every day so I can, um, so, so I've got enough money to keep eating for while, while I'm there and um, just continuing training. And then, yeah, so um, yeah, I was doing well. I was really enjoying it, you know. I was, I was really happy that I was in the environment. I was in about it, you know. Mm. I, was, I was doing well. At the same time, it did get a bit disheartened. I was like, I just hope that it's not a case of, you know, not this time, you know, after, after everything I've already put in. 
Mm. And bear in mind, I am cutting this whole story very short just to try and condense it. Like, because there is a lot of stuff that happened. But um, yeah, I'm um, one day I um, I'm in a, I'm in the changing rooms and I get called to go to go out to um, catch a kit man and you know one of the players and stuff like that. So I do that and I come back in. And everyone's just sitting around, and I don't know if you've sort of seen if you've seen the video. I've seen the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're like, um, I can't remember what they said, but it was something that was inside my locker, and I just kind of grabbed it and was like, here, here, here you go. And then I can't remember, I can't remember again what they said. And I went back up there, and I was like, I was like, what's going on? And then they were like, dude. <laughs> yeah. So I look, I see my name, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm, 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 I'm peeing inside, like. For real, dude, yeah. it was like it was, un- it was unbelievable, man. It's like your reaction was like, Oh, that, <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah. It's like, Oh, that's not bad, <laughs> like, yeah, like, that's not bad. I was, dude, it's the, the shock. I'm telling yeah. you, it's like I couldn't believe it because it's like I trained so much and you know, and done so much, sacrificed so much, and my family had, and my missus' family had, you know, what to finally get to that point, you know, and it's like. It's very easy for people to stop believing in you, you know? Mm. It's very easy for people to be like, ah, maybe. Because it's like, obviously at these trials, not everybody's family in that, they can't see what I'm doing. All they mm. can hear is my word. All they can hear is, I did well. All they mm. can hear is, oh, I did. They don't, they, they don't know. For all you know, I could be lying. I could, I could be terrible and coming back and saying I'm doing well, you know? So for them to just keep saying, you know what, keep going, keep going, keep going, we believe in you. And to finally have the day come where, it all came together and I finally signed a professional contract. Dude, that was like, mm. the shock of it, it didn't quite kick in. It was like, that's why I was yeah. like, well, that's not bad, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I was, man, it was, that, that was unreal, man. It was like, mm. and I, was, I was so grateful um, to the gaffer, you know, for, um, for taking a chance on me, man. And I, at the time I was um, taking up a, a roster slot as well. So that made it even more special, you know. I've been yeah. rejected by so many teams because that means I'm an international. And Amanda had the faith in me, you know, to turn around and be like, you know what, I don't I don't care in it. Like, I like what I've seen. I like your attitude. I like, you You know, you've got the ability like that, that, that you know, you, you play the style that we want to play over here. You know, I like you. I'm going to take a chance, you know. Um, so, I, you know, I'm really grateful to the manager for that, you know. And you know what, the, the, all my teammates as well, um, all of them were great with me while it was happening. You know, they'd all do their bits to help me and all that kind of stuff. Even though I wasn't a signed player at the time, you know, mm-hmm. they'd do their bits to help me from um, from the staff at the top to staff that um, just that just that, that, that are cleaning. They were all really great to me, you know. And so it just made it all that more, all that bit more special, you know. And um, well, I can tell you, my family were they were very very pleased. So mm-hmm. yeah. So that's, your story uh, is unreal. <laughs> yeah man so that's me cutting it down but that's um that's the story man that's how i got to where i am right now man mm. it's, been a, it's been a wild ride and i'm you know what the, the hope is of oh, the way i look at it now I, I think to myself i made it this far there's no point making it this far to only make it this far man yeah like I, i'm sure i've got much more sto- <laughs> Sky's story the limit. yeah i've, I've the hope is obviously to keep going even higher and, you know, keep honing my skills and step up into the next level and do, and see how really, how far I can go, you know, because mm. I'm, I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know if someone said, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure as a lot of uh, people who really didn't believe I could make it to this point. So, and, you know, I thank God that I'm, I'm here now, isn't it? So mm. let's see how, 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 how far this thing can go, you know? So, yeah. So I mean, it, it would be very easy, you know, for someone else uh, to give up after all the rejection, all, yeah. all, all the kind of setbacks. But your your story is just very inspiring, you know, getting back up to their feet, um, sending emails out, everything. It's unreal. Yeah. It's unreal. Uh, I, could, I can't explain to you how many, how, how many emails I got back saying, no, 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 no. Yeah. And it's like, I could tell you phone calls I've had with scouts, um, you know, you, you know, just, you know, what? It's, it's a funny story actually. Um, and obviously I can understand it. I, um, <laughs> I actually speak, ended up speaking to a scout at Norwich city. Um, this right. is after I got, um, I got released by, um, by, um, by Luton. 
and I was hoping to to, to, um, to get a trial at Norwich because one of my one of my friends who had been released by um, been released by Luton as well has managed to sign for Norwich. Right. So um, I was like, you know, I'll give it I'll give it a shot. So we were talking, we were talking, and um, at the time the goalkeeper they had was Jed Steer. Just, so uh, yeah, yeah. If I'm, is he a Villa now? Yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a Villa now. So mm. there you mm. go. But <laughs> but um, he was he 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 was like. He said to me, he goes, right, mate. He goes, so you've been released by Luton Town. I was like, yeah. He goes, well, we've got a kid called um, Jed Steer playing for us. He goes, um, and if I remember correctly, he was like, he's playing for um, his age group of England, for, for England, his age group. What makes you think we're going to take you? Hmm. And I was kind of like, I was like, um, well, you never know. <laughs> 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 and he was like, yeah, sorry. And I was like, okay, well. You know, it's worth a try, isn't it? <laughs> and mm. I couldn't recall so many conversations like that. So I think I bothered so many people <laughs> just trying to get an opportunity. And, you know, like, it's been crazy, man. Just because it, it, I, I can't lie to you, it's so disheartening, man. It was so disheartening, you know, hearing no so many times until you get a day where you finally hear yes. Mm. It's something else, bro. I can tell you that. Mm. Definitely. I can imagine. You need to educate me in, in, in American kind of football. How, how does it work? Because you're kind of, are you second to like yeah. tier? You're right. Yeah. So I'd, how, does, I'd how does MLS kind of work with second tier? Right. So it's like um, they have affiliates. So um, right. it's like, it's obviously, you know, there's no promotion relegation. Mm -hmm. So Major League Soccer MLS is the top level out here. Then the second level was the USL Championship, is what, which is what our team plays in. Mm -hmm. And then the league below that is USL League One, and you've got other leagues that go um, below that. So obviously, there's no promotion relegation. I think you just kind of the way you go and kind of go between them. You just got to play well, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you either got to know somebody, or you got to play. Or you got to play well, make an impression, and you know, pray to God that somebody takes a chance on you. You know, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how you move up between the leagues. But I would say there are players in our league who could definitely play in the MLS. Yeah. No doubt. It's just getting an opportunity, as, as it is with, any, with everything, you know, just getting an opportunity, having someone to say, you know, I like that guy. So mm. that's kind of that's kind of the tears in American, in American, American football. So I'd, um, I'd say the equivalent of us is the championship. Mm. <laughs> Obviously, mm. the, the quality level is very different, but that's that would be what the equivalent is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. How does, is there a draft out there as well? Yeah, there's a draft. So, um, Kids go through university and they play for the they play for the university and um, I think those who put up um, cause they love statistics over here so those who put up good stats and stuff like that they get called into um, a combine and you know they play a bunch of games get put into teams and I think those that do those that do the best and um, based on whatever the MLS teams needs are um, they draft the players and. Um, mm. If I'm correct, you don't sign straight away. So, well, some of them may do, but I think a lot of the time it's you go into preseason with a team, and if you do well, you know you put pen to paper. So that's kind of mm. how that works. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, talk to me about the kind of difference in cultures, almost. I mean, America. Obviously, you call it soccer. Do you yeah. call, do you call it soccer? Have you been? Uh, have you been? Have you been telling <laughs> telling your teammates? Game. Yeah, yeah, I think it's football. It's football <laughs> over here. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, no. Um, do you know what's 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 interesting? Our team, we have um, so many different nationalities in our team. We have right. Asian, we have French, we have Spanish, we have Mexican, we have American. You know, um, we've 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 we have we have some guys from Congo. You know, we um, we've got so many different nationalities. Um, so. I think we all just bring a bring our own different flavor into into training, you know, or our, our own different. Obviously, the manager wants us to play one certain style. Yeah. But we all bring our own certain flair, and you know what? It's like it sounds a bit cliche, but you know how people say football's universal language. Mm -hmm. So it's like once you, no matter where you've been, no matter you know where you're from, all that kind of stuff, um, you all just kind of just get along because you're playing football, you know? <laughs> mm. So it's really, really good. I mean, in terms of the culture and stuff, obviously it's not the same as it is in England. Whereas 
we eat, sleep and breathe fo football over there. Um, obviously, they have so many sports which, um, which mm. are much bigger than football. But I would say being in El Paso and being right next to the border of Mexico, loads of people here love football. Right. So they yeah. were right next to Mexico. They love football in Mexico. So, um, you know, we, we have a really, really big fan base, which is really, really good. Um, you know, some teams in the league maybe, maybe don't. But I think on the whole, um, we get, I think the teams in our league, we get quite a few fans, to be fair. New Mexico, for example, they get tons of fans, man. I think mm. when we played against them, I think, if I'm correct, was it like, was it like 10,000 people we got? Something really? Like that? Yeah, it was wild. Man. Wow. It was real, real good. Yeah, great atmosphere. So, um, yeah, no, I think um, it's, it's, it's picking up over here. Whether or not it can overtake things like the NFL and uh, basketball and baseball is and that's, um, still has to be seen. But it's getting, big, it's getting big and, you know, I'm enjoying it. So I can't mm. complain. <laughs> mm. is, is, I mean, imagine like um, America's massive compared to the UK. Is, <laughs> is um, kind of away support, is that like non-existent over there? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. kind of non-existent, man. Because mm. like, I mean, we play in the Western Conference, so. Right. Um, oh yeah, I was going. Yeah, conferences. I mean, that helps a little bit. It helps a little bit, but not a lot because it's like mm, still big. I can. I mean, to fly from one from one state to another can take you like seven hours, dude. It takes like six hours to fly from England to New York, innit? Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like away support is pretty non-existent unless you're going somewhere close. So right, when we. Yeah played New Mexico which is like four hours away you know we took we took quite a few fans over there right, but okay. it's like if you're gonna go and play um Tacoma how, how many people are gonna take a day off work to go to, to go fly mm -hmm. out to Tacoma you know what I mean it's like yeah, it's like a yeah. four hour flight <laughs> mm -hmm. so but you know it's you know what it's like it's still enjoyable regardless you know um the banter that some of the fans give um some of it's not great, <laughs> yeah. but it's funny. It's something to listen to. So a bit different. That, yeah, it's very, very, very different. Mm. But that gets, you, that gets you going, you know. It's in, it's enjoyable. It's all in good fun. So yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I can I can imagine. You know, you being in goal as well. You get you get a lot of comments. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you get a lot of comments um, about my accent. <laughs> right, <laughs> really. About, um, strange ones about the color of the kit, like. Just, just one that ones that aren't great. I think one actually, to be fair, one of the funniest ones um, that I ever did here was in um, <laughs> was in Colorado, and uh, we were winning. And one of the fans was like, "Don't think you're special. We lose every week." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That, that's a that's a classic. Yeah, it's classic. So that was funny, you know. And uh, you know, it's it's funny at halftime when I was um, pinging some balls. I ended up chatting to some of the fans and that, and it was it was real nice, man. It's not like. It's not like England where it's like intense, man. Like fans are going at you. It's like yeah, they're pretty, they're very friendly, man. <laughs> you mm. know, so it's, it's good. It's real good. Yeah. How have you have you been kind of adjust? Like, how do I say it? Have you has your twang almost has your tone of your voice almost adjusted? Yeah. Not being in America, no, at all. Do you know what? They make fun of me all the time in training because they're like, you, "You sound like a proper Londoner." Like, <laughs> mm. like I, I thought um, that I would start picking up words and like all that kind of stuff. I'm like, nah, no chance. I think to be fair, the, the other day they were making fun of me because I called, um, I, I, I called the car park. I was like, "Oh, the ball's gone in the car park." And they they like, call it a car park. They call it a parking lot. So they're like, "Oh, right, okay." Like, what are you talking about? And I was like, the car park, like over there, where we park the cars. Yeah. And they're like, what? So only cars get parked there? I was like, well, no, but it's the car park, innit? They're like, no, it's a parking lot. I was like, all right, here we go. Mm. <laughs> so it's like, so many different things I sat say to them, like, yeah, so it's, they, they make fun of it. <laughs> yeah. Have you, have you kind of been teaching them as well? There's actually more accents than just the Queen's English. Oh my gosh. Do you know what? I've, I've, I've said this so many times. They say you've got a British accent. I'm like, dude, you do realise Britain is more than one country. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's so many accents, like, in England alone. I was like, if you heard someone from Birmingham talk, for someone, someone from Newcastle, and, like, to the amount of accents you have in London, I was like, dude, like, 
I was like, if you want to generalize, I've got an English accent, but not a British, because like, dude, that's more than one country. So like, yeah, yeah. I'll try to tell him. <laughs> yeah. so, um, surely the surely they should know that though. Because think about it, if if someone in like New York compared to someone in like LA. That's what I sure, said. Sure, like, surely it's different. Dude, you go from New York to North Carolina, there's a different accent. Like yeah, so yeah, yeah. we all we haven't got the same accent. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, yeah, they just, they just don't get it, man. They still think it's yeah. a British accent. They see like Britain as just like one big place, whereas it's more than one country. So uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll kind of move on to some more general questions about teammates, you know, more more stuff like that. Uh, starting off though, what what do you think are the key attributes of a goalkeeper? Key attributes of a goalkeeper. <clears throat> so. I think things have changed quite a lot, you know. So, um, for me personally, I think key attributes of a goalkeeper has to be, you've got to be able to make saves, man. Like, I know, obviously, we've moved forward and, you know, we want to play with your feet and stuff. And that is all very, very important. But the way I look at that list as well, if you want someone to just be good at playing with their feet, put a midfielder in goal. So, I think, first and foremost, you've got to be looking at somebody <clears throat> who can be a game saver for you. You can say maybe a game winner, but I, I look at you as a game saver. You're, it's nil-nil, last minute you make a save, you save the team a point. You're winning one-nil, last minute make a save, you get your team a win. You know, I'm looking at, I think, I think you've got to be looking at somebody. Have I, got, have I got a goalkeeper who can really keep me in a game with the saves that they make? So I think that my biggest first attribute has to be, you've got to be able to make saves. Then from there, I would look at, you know, being good with your feet. You know, being able to distribute and play out from the back, I would say that's a very that's a, that's a, that's a second for me. Um, so you've got your goalkeeper who can make real good saves. Now, can you have a goalkeeper who can set up attacks, who can get the ball moving real quick? You know, um, who can, yeah, maybe there's an easy pass here, but who can see the pass, which is really going to get the team forward? You know, I think that's a, that's a massive attribute. Um, me, I love to talk. So right, I think communication, yeah, communication is, yeah, um, yeah. is massive, like, as probably your players will tell you, I don't shut up, man. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think communication is massive, man. You know, letting, letting your, um, the players know that you're available. Letting them know there's a man on. Letting them know they can turn. Letting them know they can drive. You know, all that kind of stuff. Letting them know, okay, they're under pressure. Give me the ball back. I'll, 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 sh- I'll, sh- I'll, sh- I'll shift the play, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think communication, um, shot stopping, be able to make saves, new distribution. I think... And being a leader as well, being someone um, that the players can trust, you know. So, you know, when, when the goal's conceded, like I always say, there's, there's 10 other players before it gets to you, you know. So, um, but being somebody that they can trust at the back, that if he gets through us 10, I know he's going to save it, you know. I think that's um, being, and being a leader, like, you know, being someone they can trust, being a leader at the back. Mm-hmm. I think those are um, really, really big attributes for a goalkeeper. Mm. Um, we, we've we seen a lot of players come out of academies now, uh, starting now, that have gone abroad and, you know, done the world, the world of good. Um, do you think that a move to America, like you've done, do you reckon more more players from England maybe should start doing it? Is it a Good career path, starting up football again. Yeah, no, I definitely say yes because um, everybody wants to play in the Premier League, and you know you you, you want to be a star um, back in England. But it's like there's a whole other world out there, mm. and I um, yeah, like I said, like you said, I I've gone to the US. Uh, Max um, Crocker, uh, my friend, he's he's gone to play in Australia. You mm. know. Um, Sweden, there's so many other countries of the Bundesliga playing in Germany. There's so many other countries where you can really build a career for yourself. I'd say don't be single minded and be don't be yeah. one tracked into staying in England because England wasn't working for me. And the reason being, like I said, I wasn't getting told by people in England that we don't think you're good. We're getting told by I wasn't told by people, dude, you are too small. Mm. So yeah, yeah. that was really that was really what it was. All it was was we want you to be six foot three, six foot four. Mm-hmm. So what am I going to do? Stop my career because I'm not that tall, or go and pursue it somewhere else where they're going to give me a chance? You know. So I think more players, um, you know, if they're not, if you get a chance in England and you're progressing over there, <clears throat> why don't you stay there? Like, mm. dude, you're yeah. playing in England. Like the the, um, <clears throat> the money if you're playing over there is amazing. You know, um, 
it's 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 our biggest sport. So the exposure you're getting, the quality of the football, you're learning every day. It's stay there if you're doing well. But if you're not getting the opportunities, yeah, I'd say persevere for a bit, but be open to going somewhere else, yeah. going to another country where you can re- where you're gonna be given a chance, where definitely, the fact that you played in England carries weight. Because mm. everybody knows the Premier League, the Championship, League One, League Two, even the conference is um the National League is um just the quality in there is high. Yeah, you I'm know. Real. Yeah, I'm, I'm real. Like, like the national league, like the quality there will beat some of the second and third divisions in. Yeah, um, I, d- yeah, I don't country. think there's much. I don't think there's much difference with League Two in the national league. It's like the I mean, players are unbelievable in there, you know. And it's like so, if you're not getting the opportunity, like all the the, the names and the leagues carry weight. So go abroad, mm-hmm. you know, and you mm-hmm. know start and really build a career for yourself. Yeah, definitely. Um, we'll go to teammate questions now. Go on. Um, we'll start with the most skillful player you've ever played with. Most skill, like in general or in my team. Right, we'll, we'll do we'll do both then. We'll do in your team and who you've played against. Okay, who? Um, so I would say in my team the most skillful player. Okay, so last season it would have been a guy called Sebastian Velasquez because he's he's at Miami right now. His feet were unbelievable. But right now, oh, that's a tough one. Most skillful. Probably, probably Saeed. Like, yeah, probably, I'd say probably Saeed. His feet are so good. Like, skillful, skill, skill wise. Yeah, yeah, I'd say probably Saeed, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he played against. Most skillful. I mean, that's a good question. I can't even remember, you know. <laughs> um, there, there was a guy actually, Kavon Freyer. His feet were, he plays for New Mexico. His feet were unbelievable. Probably, I wouldn't say the most skillful guy I've ever played against, but he's the one I can remember right now. Mm. <laughs> so, but um, I'd say probably, yeah, Alfonso Davies, if I was going to say with, like, like, yeah. like, one catch two, dude, the guy's feet are unbelievable. Mm. Yeah. So. Could, you, could you see potential in him as soon as you played with him? Dude, yeah, he's good, man. And he's yeah. young as well. It's he's like, uh, like watching him at Bayern, he's unbelievable. Bro, unbelievable. Uh, yeah, well, I was like, who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> like, how are you this young and that good? Like, uh, there's one goal, I think his first goal that he scored for the Whitecaps 2 in the USL. Just uh, just drove down the left wing and just banged one. I was I was all right, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Unreal. Yeah. Um, in the dressing room, who right. who's the kind of prankster? Who's the funniest you've ever been around? Right, I'd say, oh, do you know what? Last season, it would have been Seba, uh, Seba Contreras. Dude, the guy was so funny, man. But right now, Prankstar. Who's into Probably Foxy, you know. <laughs> Andrew Fox. Um, he, he used to be at Grimsby. That guy, right. that guy is funny, man. He's, 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 he's hilarious. So I'd say probably Prankstar. Probably, probably, probably Foxy, you know. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Um, who who would be the overall best player you've played with and maybe against as well? Overall best player that I've played with? Yeah. Can I say trained with? If you want, yeah. Thierry Henry. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Thierry, Thierry, actually, no, Dimitri Payet. They're, they're, they're close. They're on levels. That's, 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 that's a close one, isn't it? That's a close one, yeah. Yeah, because... Um, Payet is unbelievable, man. <laughs> and then Henri's a legend. Like, so. I mean, you said Henri, and that, that was in his later years. Imagine him in like his prime at Arsenal. Henri. Yeah, imagine, man. Imagine. Do, do you know what? He was, he is unbelievable, man. I can only imagine what he was doing in training at Arsenal. And do you know what? One thing I must say Tim Cahill's ability to head the ball is unparalleled. Dude, like, I've never seen anything like it. Because like, you must have you ever seen the head as you score, you mm. score when you're playing. And it's like, in training at the Red Bulls, this guy would just just get up, like, like I'd never seen before. And he could head anything, just put it all to he's the not, He's like, not the tallest either, is he? Not the tallest, but this guy, I think he's, he's probably the best header of the ball that I've ever seen in my life. Really? I've never seen anything like it. Like, if it comes off his head, it's going to a corner. <laughs> Without fail. He was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Less yeah. um, ever, past, present, who you've played with, 
we'll we'll throw in trained trained with if you want as well. You you've got five a side team. Who are you putting in a five a side team that you've played with, trained with, past present? Right. Okay. So, am I in goal or not? <laughs> if you want, I go and I throw myself in goal. Why not? I throw myself in goal. Five a side. Uh, four of players. Um, Shiro, our centre back, Abs- absolute baller. So, um, mm. I'd. I'd stick him at the back, you know, solid, solid. Um, I think some of these names pick themselves. Dimitri Payet. <laughs> Dimitri Payet. Um, I kind of think I think I think I kind of have to make something about. I think I have to go with Payet, Kale, Henri, and Shiro. <laughs> like, <laughs> if I'm going with the best players, then <laughs> yeah, I think that kind of has to be it. To be honest with you, but then obviously then you've got like Davies as well, and it's like, and you've got Richie Ryan. You know, like it's a tough one, but if I'm if I'm gonna go with names yeah. and the bet, I'm gonna have to go Payet, Cahill, Henri, Giro, myself in goal. That's mm. what I have to do. Great team. <laughs> I imagine yeah. that would do well in a five aside tournament. You know what I mean? Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> um pre match, what what music are you listening to? <sighs> do you know what I'm one of guys I listen to anything, man. I listen to good music, but I'd say right now. I think Little Baby just uh, Little Baby just released uh, a song which I've been listening to quite a lot and I like that. Um, mm. Just I listen, to, I listen to anything. I've, I've listened to a lot of uh, Spanish music since I've been in El Paso. All right. So that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of um, it's a lot of um, I can't even remember the names of these guys. Um, Bad Bunny, mm. A Balvin. Yeah. So mm. a lot of. Um, a lot of would, you say, would you say your music choice has kind of changed? It's changed, definitely yeah. it's changed. As I've got older and as I've been in El Paso, um, as I've been in the US, my uh, music choices have changed. Like, mm. I still listen to like a lot of um, rappers from England um, still. You know, I, I, I love gigs, man. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, yeah. I, I love gigs. And you know, I can I agree with that. that. Yeah, I love gigs. And you know what? Someone I never thought I'd like, but listen to some of his songs. He's actually really good dappy. Oh, right. He actually, he actually released a song like um, two weeks ago, and dude, he's actually he's actually fire. Mm. Quite real good. I remember like, him in his end ups days. End ups. I remember his un- you know when he's in end ups. I was like, ah, I'm not mm, this yeah. but then yeah, when he went yeah. solo, like you listen to a lot of his stuff. He's actually really good, you know. Like, mm. so I, I listen to all types of music. I like good music, man. If it's good, I'll listen to it. Mm. Appreciate that. Um, before before we call it a day, any shout outs you want to make? Any shout outs? Mm, yeah, no, nah, just uh, yeah, just a couple. Just uh, shout out to my teammates and you know all my friends back in England. If you happen to uh, happen to watch this, and my family, my wife, you know, for supporting me through you know through my journey and stuff. So everyone that did, if you get a chance to watch this, you know, thank you. Mm. Well, Jay, it's been a been a pleasure having you on. This story is unreal again. Um, I, I highly suggest anyone out there who hasn't watched maybe the video of the the dressing room when you first first get that um, big news. I highly recommend you go and watch it. Um, unbelievable stuff. It's just joyous. I mean, yeah, yeah. You you, you see you seem like a, a really nice guy. You've been smiling the whole way through. <laughs> really, really, really likable guy. Um, and all the best for the future. Maybe see you back in England, maybe see you in the MLS, you know, who knows, who knows what happen, what will happen, you know, sky's the limit. Um, good luck with the rest of the season and uh, maybe, maybe catch up soon. Definitely, man. I'll be good. That'll be awesome. Cheers, man. Really appreciate it. No worries. No worries. See you later. See you, mate.